Okay, so here we go again. Just logging into the machine. And there's our prompt. Login. And run StartX to start the basic graphical environment we've got. So if you remember, we built X windows. And then the windows you can see are TWM the tabbed window manager so now I just need to reorganize this a little bit I'll just put this over to the side and one thing I didn't show you was um, well you can see TWM is the thing controlling the windows X term are the windows here there's that X clock here with a little clock and the other thing I installed was XI is just a little toy which is just a pair of eyes that follows cursor and that is all it does and I guess it just proves that the cursor is working correctly so I'll get rid of this little window here um, this is the login window if you exit this window the whole session disappears so it's quite important not to exit that when you're using TWM. So what I'm going to do is just go into root um, so do this here. and I'll leave that one up. I'll use this one as the main terminal. Uh, let's see if we can make these even bigger. Enormous. Oh yes, that's nice and big. And I'll reverse the video as well, just to make the colours a bit easier to read. Just shrink that down so it fits on the screen properly. Okay, so I'll become root here too. And the next thing I need to do is to install a graphical web browser. So there's several to install. They all take varying amounts of time to install. None of them are particularly quick. Um, although there's probably some um, basic ones off the top of the head. I can't think of any that are probably a little, little bit limited in terms of the functionality. Um, so if you do want a quick build that might be something to look at but I'm just going to go straight for building Firefox um, it's relatively quick maybe oh, I don't know probably about 20 minutes on this machine I guess um, I suppose something like Chromium which would probably take over an hour on this machine probably even something like two hours uh, as a rough guess so just do um, Emerge Firefox like that, and you see it pulls in a lot of other stuff that's required. So it's going to take a little bit longer than it would do to update normally uh, because of these other packages. Um, normally, obviously, if it was uh, Firefox being updated, it would just be the package itself. So, um, that's something that I'll do now. Um, before I carry on, I just noticed, and I don't remember seeing this in the instructions. In fact, there's a couple of things that seem to be missing, unless I missed, skipped over them. Um, one quite important thing is the localization that packages can use. <clears throat> so you can see this variable here in Firefox, li or L10N, stands for localization, and it's a way of configuring um, any package that uses it to know what language to use by default. Um, so generally, it's a case of putting in your country code. So for example, Spain speaking Spanish, 
es dash es uh, for me i'm a speaker of english that'd so be en dash and then country code gb um for the us it would just be en i'm not sure if there was an en dash us so i'm going to edit that first of all that goes into the portage make.conf and I'll stick it down here just out of the way because it doesn't get altered at all once it's set I'll stick it here so it's L capital L one zero N equals um, EN and EN dash G but in fact I put the GB one first so if there is a preference that we use that one and the second preference would be the American English one I'll save that so like I said I'm not sure if I skipped over that because it is such a small item but quite or could be quite an important one um, so I really should do an update in case there's anything that uses anything else that uses it I don't think there is so far no it tends to be the bigger packages like another one I can think of that uses it is LibreOffice and there's no doubt a few others. You might still see reference to something called Lang, um, which is the old way of specifying the language. Um, as far as I know, it's been completely replaced now by L10N, um, although I do see references to it sometimes still. The only difference is that instead of dashes, there's underscores, so the EN, EN would remain the same, but the EN dash GB that I've just put in for L10N is actually EN underscore GB with the lang variable. But um, as I said, I don't think it's used at all anymore. Um, it's just a case if you see it, um, it's probably L10N it should be changed to. But of course, you can check if you see it against the package, just you know, trying to merge a package, for example, and see what it uses and as you can see Firefox is not using lang it's using L10N so because I've done the ask it's it said that there's some changes that need to be made to the config file do I want to do them had I not done the ask um, it probably would have just carried on made the changes and started building so it could add the changes and what it does it will add these comments and then it will just add that to the um, end of the package.use file um, but because I like to, like to keep them all together in a alphabetical uh, order um, I normally just do no there copy this information and edit package.use manually so that's in media libs all right okay so we've only got one other thing in there anyway so I'll stick that there and I'll just remove the version because otherwise when libvpx gets updated it'll be a different version and this won't apply. So I'll just leave it unversioned and this will apply to all versions, well at least while it uses that post pro um, use flag. So I'll save that, re-emerge it and oh sorry post proc I didn't call uh, copy it properly so let's do no and add on the C there. So you can see that it didn't complain that post pro wasn't recognized, it just ignored it. But because of that, it still recognized that post proc needed to be added to the use flags in package.use. So there we go, there's a complete uh, dependency list of what needs to be installed to enable Firefox to run. So there's quite a few there. So I'll press enter and start that building. Like I say, this is, I would imagine, at least half an hour possibly for Firefox. Um, and with the rest of it, it could be upwards of an hour or so. So let's get that going. And just while that's running, in this window here, I'll show you um, a couple of other little features we can use to monitor how well that's doing let's keep that separate size so you might have seen me use it yesterday as a, a tool called QLOP 
and when you uh, press enter on that it shows you what um, were the last things to be built so what what effectively has been built on this system since the gentle kit package has been installed so if you can see on the right there's um, been a couple of packages that have installed on the seventh package now so if I update this you can see that uh, in fact it's today's packages you can put in date ranges and um, anything older than such and such um, so there's lots of different options there for filtering out um, what gets displayed and you can even show what's been unmerged uh, so that's quite useful to see the progress of um, a big update like this um, you could also see what's currently being installed with QLOP minus R so you can see running is what minus R stands for and you can see at the moment CLANG common is running it's got an estimated time to arrive or complete unknown because it's never been built before on this machine so it's got nothing to go by but because these other packages here have already been built they've now got an ETA so if you did for example QLOP um, say lib event it shows you every single time lib event has been installed and the time it, each one of those um, builds took and it will use the I believe it's the average of those builds to give back the ETA when it next gets built so if you, if you happen to do QLOP minus R while lib event is running in the, in the future it will show you an estimated ETA based on previous times so it does mean if you're using the machine for something else um, and stealing CPU cycles that uh, Portage is using to build um, it will mean that these figures will get skewed obviously or likewise if you're doing multiple jobs at the same time that's multiple packages being built at the same time they're obviously going to take longer so these um, will get skewed but building as single jobs uh, multiple threads they should be pretty consistent and it, it can be quite accurate at ETA so that's as I say quite a useful thing if you're got something running and you just want an idea of how much longer it's got to do to complete or you know what what it's done um, it's quite a useful tool to have so I'll just leave that running and we'll come back when it's completed right well that took um, one hour and 50 minutes to compile and if we look at QLOP Firefox we'll see that took just 20 minutes so an hour and a half of that build was building all the support packages that Firefox needed so we should have a Firefox available to use now so let's just quickly test that in this window as the normal user and there's the window that's appeared just place that somewhere and there you go there it is working fine so what we can do now is to if I move this over here cover up that window that could log us out if misused um, if I go to let's get rid of that go back to the KDE web page where I started from which is um, actually wiki .gen2 .org forward slash wiki forward slash kda so that's where I've started from I've then been going through this so here's all the services that I've installed been to the X server page installed XORG server 